Hello and welcome, you are listening to episode 59 of the Nearly Men Video Games Podcast coming to you from Scotland on Wednesday, the 18th of March 2020. I am Paul Kaczynski and joining me today is none other than Colin Little. Hello. And Gary Hawk Simmons. Hello, hello, hello. We have nothing to do with the video games industry. We do not make them, we do not sell them, and we're not even particularly good at them. We are the Nearly Men and at some point you've probably kicked our asses online. Everybody stay two metres away from me. Yep. <laughs> that was very sing-songy. I was feel jazz hands coming on. Well, hey, man. Got to keep it fresh. <laughs> Got to keep it lively. <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen. We are, of course, uh, more than two metres away from each other as we yeah. are a number of miles away from each other. How are you all feeling? Uh, well, it's a bit alarming that between episode uh, episode 58 of The Nearly Men and episode 59... Um, <laughs> <laughs> it kind of feels like the world's on on its way out. <laughs> yeah, some, um, suddenly in a Cormac McCarthy novel. You did ask for The Last of Us too early. <laughs> <laughs> you jinxed it? It was you? <gasps> <gasps> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, and, and you know, there's every possibility that as this episode goes on, we're going to make jokes, but... Um, but please know out there, we're, we're not taking this lightly. It is, it's quite scary times. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is, uh, it is that. Especially, um, you know, for, well, from Gary's point of view, he's a school teacher. He's been on the front lines. Um, my, my wife's a school teacher. Um, more specifically, uh, family, my family members are NHS staff who are literally on the front lines of things. So, um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of scary, scary times at the moment. But, um, yeah, so get yeah, social distancing and all that sort of stuff and just trying to trying to ride this one out it looks like we're we're in this for the long haul but gamers we've got this we never socialize we're gonna come into <laughs> our own come yeah our own. we were born for this it is a bit crazy though isn't it, it is it's a uh, mm. it's, it's, it's the panic buying and all that that can't go over it's just it's not necessary but it's it's when i couldn't go when i went into the supermarket and i couldn't get tomatoes i went that's something something's not right here man <laughs> tomatoes tomatoes it's um it's it's bizarre and you know I, 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 luckily enough I've got some in the house because um, otherwise I, I, the amount of times I've been in supermarkets recently and haven't been able to see a roll of toilet roll I'd be worried if I remembered what it, what they looked like what, what, um, is, what is the thing about toilet roll? I well I heard somebody talk about the potential science or the psychology behind it that because a big bag, a big box of toilet roll feels like quite a lot of stuff and it like will take up quite a lot of space in your room or in the corner of a room or in a Thing, it feels like you're well supplied. Well, um, so does a pallet of baked beans, though. Well, about, absolutely. Sure but that's say, the way to go. A pallet of baked beans will be heavier to carry than um, than a big wad of toilet roll. Well, that's good. That's building your immune system as well at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, it's just madness. Uh, it is madness indeed. But you know, life is going on, and uh, just uh, I, don't, I don't know what about forty percent of the country self isolating or whatever. No. Um, uh, unfortunately, as you say, Gary Hogg has to be out in the front lines uh, doing doing the business. So we salute you, sir. Oh, thank you, thank you. It won't be on the front lines for very much longer. I saw. Um, I see by Friday the schools will be closing, and um, I know that, that there will still be uh, certain kids um, at the school and all that. But but hopefully, hopefully, for we don't know. Gary, yeah, it it's all just speculation. So. Well, no, I, I just saw the thing, so it does seem that Friday's it's happening in it, but key children of key workers and all that sort of stuff will be uh, will still be at, at school, but the mm-hmm. the rest of the kids will will not be, um, and you know, kids with school lunches and uh, various care support stuff. So it it sort of looks like it'll be some sort of skeleton staff and 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 just the kids in there to to keep them and keep the country going. So do you mean like yeah. ghosts? The skeleton staff, like ghosts and stuff. Well, well, possibly you never know. Like de- demons and skeletons, <laughs> and anyway, I I do think that we should probably, uh, you know, I think I certainly feel there's saturation already in this sort of thing. We're we're hearing it everywhere. You turn on the telly, it's everywhere. So let's try and give people a little um, uh, whilst giving it the gravity and the seriousness it, it, it um requires. Let's uh, try and um. <laughs> Give some some folks some other things to focus on for a little while. Oh, what, do you, what do you mean? You want me to sing? 
no. no. I've said no. I'll just do no. some impressions for you. No. 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 Let's just talk about the games. Talk about uh, the games. Yes, of course. We are the Neil Amen Video Games Podcast. We're here for all your Neil Amen needs. If you're mediocrity of gaming, then you are most welcome. And we love you getting in touch. Here's how you can do it. Reaching the Nearly Men is easier than ever. Search for the Nearly Men Video Games Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or your preferred podcast player. We stream on Twitch. Follow Colin at Colin underscore NM. Follow Paul at Paul Kaczynski, all one word. Follow Gary at Blunderboy87. And let's get social on Facebook as The Nearly Men. Twitter and Instagram where we are at Nearly Men. Or go old school and email us on info at thenearlymen.com. Need all that again? Links are on our website, thenearlymen.com. So what are you waiting for? Yeah, so please do get in touch. We love hearing from you, especially Colin likes your fan mail and your drawings. Uh, naked pictures, all this sort of thing. Yeah, don't get don't get much of that these days. Yeah, uh, that's what happens when, when you get over a certain age, mate. Naked pictures <laughs> to an absolute minimum. <laughs> oh, I just shuddered. Uh, the BAFTAs, as far as we know, are still going ahead. They are due to take place on the second of April. I would imagine they might happen behind closed doors and just yeah, get ordered. I think so. Um, I think so. But we are having a wee game. Uh, last time with the, the Game Awards, we did a kind of, you know, prediction game of who's going to get the most right. So we are opening up to the public. You can head to www.thenearlymen.com slash BAFTA2020. That's B-A-F-T-A-2020. And you can take part in the wee game. It's just a spreadsheet. You fill out. It's dead quick. And fire it in and we'll see who gets the best. There are already some entries in, I have to say. Oh, really? Yes, indeed. One of them is not mine. Yeah. And the other one is not mine. <laughs> well, don't worry, don't worry, guys, because you've got till midnight on the 1st of April, I'll accept. Midnight on the 1st of April is your deadline. Okay, oh, well, I'm sure I'll manage to get it in between then. Yeah, yeah, so, so, yeah. Right, so let's move on. The I mean, literally about two hours ago, uh, Sony threw a, a deep dive grenade at the world. <laughs> looking at PlayStation 5 now Colin I, I was busy making dinner and looking after two wings at the time I had my, my wireless earpiece in listening to the, the YouTube report um, but you were you were you were you were focused on it and taking notes so I'm, I'm going to pass over to you to lead this because I think you'll, yeah. you'll know what you're talking about as well you know all the things you know about the flops well let's not go that i have written down certain flops but i i don't know if i necessarily know them um yeah mark cerny did uh did his little uh announcement it was like a proper like i was he was be- beautiful minding it um or uh, or uh, goodwill hunting it yeah. in front of us and i just sat there bamboozled to be honest was um, it mark cerny or was it actually dina carvey just dressed up it was a bit of both, yeah, it certainly was. It was quite striking. <laughs> it was um, bizarre. I'm, it not, was, I'm not going to lie, it was bizarre. He, he really is a doppelganger for Dana Carvey, it's quite something. <laughs> it, was um, just, it, was, it was all a bit creepy. Just before you get into the details, the actual presentation of it was really a wee bit creepy. I know they had to cancel... The sort of- their, kid on crowd and aye, thing. and they, I know they had to cancel their 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 speech, their what's the word, their presentation at the GDC and all that. But yeah, uh, it, it was all you know in front of a green screen. I, I I couldn't work out if it was done live or whether it was edited, because I was convinced it was edited and it, it was recorded until about halfway through when he started making mistakes, and I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I I think it was it was either a done live or, or basically recorded as live as live and, maybe, then, yeah. and then and then put through uh, obviously using a, an auto cue um he's not the most engaging uh screen presence i would say he did he did do well though to be fair i thought he did incredibly it, it did well, well it's given a lot the of boring stuff man how <laughs> dense the stuff was it was incredibly boring i am not the best technically minded on, on this sort of side of things uh that's why you're the nearly man Scribble stuff down. Um, basically, what it looks like is the the PS4 5 is going to be hella powerful. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're certainly aiming for that. Um, they didn't give any sort of indication on costs, but a couple of times he did mention about keeping costs down, about keeping things. So it, they clearly are thinking about things like that and balancing things out. Um, he kind of focused on a few main points. First of all, he focused on the the SSD, and it was based a bit around their sort of dreams for PlayStation Five, and and then how they went about getting it. 
the, the kind of headlines is it's an ultra fast SSD. It's going to be um, basically the number of the same as 825 gigabits, gigabytes, which is basically a one terabyte machine minus the, the sort of um, the operating system sort of thing, as far as I'm aware. Um, for comparison, it looks like it's going to be about 100 times faster than the PlayStation 4 HDD, um, whereas the PlayStation 4 HDD could read data, um, about one gigabyte of data for every 20 seconds. Oh, wow. Um, no, every point the, the, seven of a second. No, no, I'm talking about what the PS4 could do. Oh, sorry, one sorry, I missed that. Every 20 seconds. Missed they are that. Targeting, they are targeting that the PS5 will be able to read two gigabytes in point two seven seconds. Oh, Ooh. my gosh. Which is astonishingly fast. Um, so that's five gigabytes a second, essentially. It, essentially, yeah, not not for, yeah, more or less. I uh, mm. actually actually closer to six gigabytes per second. Um, so the way they do that is to, is to do a thing called seek reduction. Um, it, the, and he explained in great depth about how they had to that you had to seek from the various rings that would be on an, uh, on the the way the data was put on, say, a Blu-ray drive, and the difference between. Uh, the new Ultra 5 SSD and the fact that SSDs themselves don't actually seek, essentially. So therefore, there's no seeks in SSD uh, and as such. Another interesting thing was that on whereas on PS4 and on the current generation of consoles, whenever we get a patch, whenever we get an update, uh, you then have to install that patch. And what they have to do is essentially is they can't just take sections out of a, a file and add these sections in. It changes the entire code. So when when uh, when a patch is installed, um, they have to rewrite the entire thing. That's why it takes a while. That doesn't happen anymore. It, it's basically just putting in stuff in and out, which actually means that your updates will be an awful lot faster. Not only are you going to down, you you will have to download an update, but of course it will download and install quicker. Um, but but then it's good to go. Um, mm. There's a bu- there's a bunch of stuff in the actual unit. There's a, a custom flash controller which reduces uh, bottlenecks and, and gives a a 5.5 gigabyte uh, per second bandwidth. So I mean it's dealing with some pretty massive uh, file sizes um, and incredibly quick. Um, it's got a custom I/O unit uh, which has its own custom decompressor. Um, it's dealing with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. RAM, which he actually said is not huge in the sort of numbers of PC gaming, but it's actually appropriate to the way that the the unit works. So, although on the on the sort of face of it, that might not seem huge numbers, especially when you're looking at sort of top end uh, PCs, the the way it uses that RAM actually sounds as though it's going to be going to be fairly decent. At least that's what they're 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 saying at the moment. Um, you will be able to use an external uh, hard drive as an, an external HDD will still be compatible. So rather than an SD, you could use an, H, H, uh, an HDD if you're following me. Um, mm-hmm. He actually pointed out the fact that, for instance, because of file sizes of uh, next gen games, you might want to keep those on your SSD. But you could put your backwards compatible PS4 games onto the external HDD. And, and as such, um, that, that would be a, a good way to sort of manage storage. The SSD itself can be upgraded, um, but it would need to be as, at least as fast as the SSD that's in the PS5 as standard, which is 5.5 gigabits per second. Um, and it would also have to be able to actually fit inside the, the, the unit. Uh, mm, basically, yeah. the, the, the M2... Uh, SSDs, which are SSD drives, um, are coming in various different sizes. Due to their heat sinks and things like that. Um, so it would need to actually fit. I mean, you can't just stuff a gigantic drive inside the the, the housing. So um, they will be letting people know further down the line exactly which drives will fit. So you will be able to upgrade them, but it won't be as simple as just grabbing any SSD. There will be particular ones, um, but certainly it is possible. You follow uh, this, Gary? There'll be a test at the yeah. end. Not at all. <laughs> I'm like, what? I don't even know what that means. A, a, a couple of uh, well, basically at the moment that that all is. I mean, it's certainly it, it, another thing to point out is they 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 stressed their marks and stressed that when they went to devs about this originally, when they said, "What do you want?" Um, 
they 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 wanted uh, you know from a new console and they consulted devs about that as such we are not having the the issue that we had with ps3 where the cell processor was so difficult to understand he pointed out the fact that generally from console to console there was a sort of period of time that it took devs to sort of um, catch up with the architecture and, and start developing. On PS2, it was one to two months. On uh, PS, uh, sorry, PS1, it was one to two months. On PS2, I think it was like maybe four to five months. PS3, it was a bloody nightmare. I think it was nearly a year. PS4 brought it back down again. Um, they're aiming for this to be one to two months. So between PS4 devs and and things, so it seems far more developer friendly, which yeah. is good. Yeah. Uh, which will ideally make things a lot easier on the development side of things. Uh, one of the big things people have been talking about for a while is ray tracing. It's one of the, the big mm. things coming through on graphical uh, upgrades and not, uh, well, on uh, the hardware side of things. This GPU does support ray tracing, but they also stress that it's not essential. It's not as though that every dev has to use it. It can be used. It doesn't have to be. Of course. Um, they've, they've got a custom AMD uh, GPU. Uh, it's called the RDNA2 chip. Um, I mean, they started talking about all sorts of things like GPU cache scrubbers, which are actually sound like they're very important, but I could not really understand uh, exactly how. It, it really went um, quite deep into all that. I mean, that, uh, but they, those sound very key, very key to the way that it's going to make the the console work. Um, and, and rather specifically, the the custom RDNA. Two chip is using these cache scrubbers. They are essentially kind of exclusive to the PS5. However, the interesting thing is he, he talk, talked about the fact that they've got a very close relationship uh, and sort of partnership with AMD, and they're using the cache scrubbers, which actually probably won't be in PC units because they don't necessarily need it, but they will be in the PS5. However, the the chances are, or what he did say is, there is the possibility that this unit, this chip may and some of the features on it may actually make their way into ps uh, into pc at some point as well he says it doesn't necessarily mean that they will but if they do it's a sign that actually the partnership has been successful um so either this chip could become exclusive or it could lead to a, a version of it appearing in pc hardware as well which is quite exciting actually it does it does point out that actually there is there is the possibility that this is quite a good bit of kit because of yeah. the PC side of things mm. want it as well it was also quite keen in saying the fact, you know, that it might turn up in PCs, that it's not that PlayStation have just used a PC graphics card. Yeah. It's actually yeah. their graphics card going into PCs. It was yeah, and more specifically, the fact that PC might end up using PlayStation's graphics card rather than other points. So yeah. rather than, you know, in the past, people have said that PC these consoles are just essentially becoming uh, PCs. It may actually be sort of in the other direction, which is quite good, and it shows you that Sony are working really close with with PC developers as well to keep the the consoles um, at least in touch and distance with with uh, with PC as well, which is cool. That is cool. As uh, I said, it, with... it was it was it was also talking about um, comparing apples and oranges as well and all that jazz yeah. Uh, yeah. with regards to PC and console and all that jazz. So yeah, I, I, I think it's important to say that because you know it, it's always that horrible feeling that as soon as a console's out, it's out of date because it kind of catch up. Um, yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's a different beast, isn't it? A console than a PC. And it, I think I think it, it points out that the, this is a bit of what my rant last week about Xbox and whether or not Xbox and PC were a different thing. At least it does point out that Sony are going in a different direction to an extent, or or at least trying to set themselves aside. Whereas, uh, you know, we we talked about the fact that possibly Microsoft are potentially blurring the lines between console and PC for them. Uh, but but Sony are are certainly setting themselves, as he said, apples and oranges. Yeah, it's nice because uh, PlayStation was always the kind of they'd be establishing themselves as a front runner on new things, and it feels like they're doing that again. Yeah, yeah. But and, and pushing themselves, and they've not gotten lacked a days ago, which is yeah. almost where you're saying the bottom lines with Xbox and PCs. It's almost about a, yeah, we'll take whatever. Whereas PlayStation are like, you will take me. <laughs> it certainly feels as though they're, they're not they're not necessarily less, uh, resting on their laurels either. I think there is a good chance that a lot of people will buy uh, will buy PS fives because they bought the PS four, but it, but the, the Sony aren't just relying on that. They are they are going for 
for something mm. and actually making it a, make, a, giving us a reason for why they're making a new console I suppose um, it, backwards compatibility I mentioned this a number of times it's interesting the, the console will essentially run in a legacy mode you'll get a PS4 legacy mode or a PS Pro legacy mode which is really cool mm -hmm. um, he also said that almost all of the hundred the, the, I can't remember which list it was but there's a there was a, an online list that they, they looked at so that someone had compiled of the hundred best PS4 games and he basically said that uh, almost all of those games, almost all of those hundred best PS4 games will be playable on PS5 backwards compatibility at launch. Kaboom! So that's great. That's really I good. did see um, in one of my gamer groups, the, the one boy was having a, a moan about how he was disappointed in the backwards compatibility, to which I was like, I don't know because I've not watched the thing. And he was like, oh, I mean, it's only 100 PS4 games. I think he thought he was getting backwards compatibility to the PS1, and I was a bit like, eh. Hmm. Well, that was a big ask um, uh, but uh, also just because you get a PS5 doesn't mean your previous consoles stop existing and yes, sometimes playing old games on your new console it burns a disk drive out more and stuff so I kind of like uh, I just I just um, yeah, I dare, yeah, yeah. that's my noise for... I dare say <laughs> that certain games will come potentially but I also think that realistically you don't need a PS5 to play PS1 games so maybe maybe that's a uh, Interesting. I mean, still, I was I was curious as to whether or not PS3 whether they would bring that in, but it seems that the poor uh, cell architecture of the PS3 has caused is still causing issues. So um, I don't know if we will see many PS3 games apart from the the remasters. Oh, no, that have done. Um, it, they talked about the geometry engine. They went really in depth about the the shapes of triangles and the way they all work, and actually. Um, Last night on stream, Paul and I were talking about the fact that certain games, particularly the menus, make um, <laughs> make uh, PlayStations absolutely take off. And he actually referenced that, the fact that the Horizon Zero Dawn can make his PS4, the, the menu can make the PS4, hmm. and it's to do with, it's to do with triangles. Um, so mm -hmm. the new geometry men engine can really help that. With regards to the ray tracing, I mean, he basically talked about it. there's a, an intersection engine. Um, he said that the interesting thing about ray tracing is the fact it's going to be able to be used for a lot of different things. It can either be used for to help really boost audio, it can be used for glo global uh, illumination, shadows, which I know people are really are really excited about the, the uh, aspect of shadows or reflections. And then he actually said that he's already seen a title uh, using uh, running on PS5 using uh, ray tracing for reflections, and and he says he's feeling very bullish about oh, how yeah. powerful it can be as a result. So that's that's quite cool. Wow. Um, power consumption. Um, it's interesting. It's using a thing called AMD Smart Shift, which will allow it to shift uh, bandwidth uh, and essentially power to from the CPU to the GPU or, or vice versa, depending on what the console is needing at any time. There's also a variable frequency approach. Um, it went from uh, uh, 2.23 gigahertz, but I think it can also go up to... Uh, three something, but um, I think it's going to be capped generally at 2.23 gigahertz with 10.3 teraflops. Uh, the other big thing, and the thing I think flops. Is, your flops, Kaczynski, Gary. that's your flops. <laughs> that that <laughs> I think Kaczynski will be very impressed or very excited about is the custom audio engine that they're using for mm, 3D audio. Num, 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 num. Um, and particularly the the focusing on presence uh, presence and locality and uh, explain presence really interesting uh, really interestingly uh, using a, a, an an analogy about raindrops and he said about rather than just playing a raindrop sound they want to basically simulate the sound of thousands or millions of individual raindrops landing Ooh. and that's that's the difference so rather than just you know, rather than just hearing the noise <laughs> of rain. Uh, coming from an audio file, it's going to be individual raindrops landing around, and that gives you the actual presence of standing in rain. Mm. Um, oh, that sounds lovely. This this whole feature yeah. really has me. Uh, I'm right in. <laughs> You're a sane man. Yeah. Uh, he also talked about about the fact that the PSVR having a separate uh, processing unit um, to essentially handle sound. That was one of the main things that the the, the PSVR's unit was for. Um, has actually helped them learn a lot about this um, and and how they do it. He, he seems really excited about it. He then went into an incredibly detailed bit about uh, HRTF 
which essentially, <laughs> essentially is the shape of your ear, the inside shape of your ear, and they mapped loads of people's ears, right, to, to give 3D audio. And what they're essentially going to do, right, they've got this custom unit built into the machine called uh, Tempest 3D, um, which is, he, he also talked about the fact that uh, essentially PS4 sound wasn't really that good, but PS3 sound was really impressive because of the, the particular sound unit. Um, he's he's talking it's more about that sort of thing uh, than, than PS4, so sound's going to be uh, far, far better um, on PS5. Uh, um, and uh, they're, they're aiming to have 3D audio, not just for people who have got Dolby Atmos or who have got speakers set around their house, but basically for all users. Everyone. Everyone. And at the moment, he said that the, the 3D audio sound is the gold standard for it at the moment on PS5 is for headphone users, but he's hoping that they're going to be able to get it working on TV as well. And it, essentially, if you're sitting in the sort of sweet spot of your TV sound, you're going to get 3D sound coming out of your TV, which is... Um, which is really cool. <laughs> to be fair, he said that they're at that stage, so if, yeah. you, if you're in the sweet spot, you will get directional audio, basically, and, loca yeah. and locality, what they're now going to work on from now until launch, essentially, or when it goes gold, if you like, is is increasing building, that sweet spot. Yeah, building that sweet spot, yeah. yeah. So, that, so that it can potentially fill the majority of your room, ideally. Un oh, unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> like, you've played Resident Evil 2, Colin, haven't you? Yeah. When X walks about and you can kind of follow them down the corridor yeah. with that yeah. like came up but that was the headphones when you don't have headphones on it's harder yeah so the fact you could do that mm. oh yeah i think it could be really impressive um i you... like the way he described the the locality um he was talking about um how you dead space, dead space. he used dead space as an example and, and you could hear a body was still about and you mm -hmm. knew he was to the right of you because mm -hmm. you could hear it coming from the right and if you turned to the right and he wasn't there then you knew he was behind you um, where he's saying with it, with this locality, you know that he's there, like you know exactly well, where he is. Well, yeah, he went even more specific because he started off. He basically said when you were playing on a TV, you could just hear a sound, and you just knew he was somewhere in the room. And on a speaker, mm -hmm. on a headphone, it was either one, it was either right or left. And and then more specifically, now you will hopefully or ideally, and certainly he's very confident in headphones and sounds pretty confident on TV that you'll essentially hear it behind you, which is terrifying. That's phenomenal. Um, it's interesting because the the uh, H uh, the HRT F S thing is essentially these sort of shapes of ears. There's going to be essentially at launch. There's going to be five different kind of HRT F uh, profiles, um, and there'll be some sort of way where you will be you'll you'll play either a wee game or you'll or you'll uh, listen to some sound samples and pick the one that suits your ear the best. Essentially, yeah. and, um, and and you'll set it to that. So there's going to be five different settings at launch. Um, and the chances are there's going to be much more uh, added to follow. He actually talked about the fact that potentially people might end up sending videos of their ears or photos of their ears to Sony, so that Sony can then um, <laughs> sort of like custom design more more settings. Yeah. Well, ears. It's it's bonkers. What was it called? The the, the chip that's going to was it the Tempest chip? Tempest. Tempest yeah. 3D, it's called, yeah. Yeah, I'm right in. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, that was more or less what he talked about. He mentioned about cooling, but he didn't talk about it. He said that he's leaving that for later, but he thinks that people are going to be very pleased with the with what they've come up with for cooling. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds... what what uh, I, I saw someone on Twitter, I, I had a quick look at... at um, uh, sort of uh, responses didn't see an awful lot because obviously there's a lot of other things in the news right now. But uh, Chris Scullion, the Scottish games journalist, he essentially said that it looks like the main difference between uh, the Xbox Series X and the PS5 at the moment is that the Xbox Series X seems to be a faster GPU, uh, the graphics unit, and the Sony seems to be a much faster SSD. And and it kind of feels that that's going to be the the sort of uh, battlegrounds of where the the war, if you call it that, uh, would be won. Um, well, do you know, I, let, think... I was going to do this as a a, a separate se section, but maybe we should tie it in. As is the Xbox Series X tech specs were revealed as well. Yep. Uh, and just flying through them, you've got a three point eight gigahertz CPU, you've got yep. a twelve teraflops uh, GPU. Uh, again, it is a custom RDNA 2. 
Uh, the memories again. There's 16 gigabyte GDDR six. Um, just jumping through the they've got it's got a one terabit custom NVMe SSD as well, mm-hmm. uh, which you can expand. Which as a as a card. Remember we were talking about this last night. How you can get an expansion card. Yeah, to, I saw that. To expand that, but you can also use your average. Uh, HDD as well. Yeah. Um, it's got a 4K UHD Blu-ray drive. He didn't talk about that in PlayStation, did he? Didn't say what it was going to be 4K. Uh, wait, he talked about Blu-rays a number of times, so I'm assuming, I'm assuming that's fairly inevitable. I can't, but, I can't uh, imagine that they wouldn't do that. He, he didn't mention it. I mean, the the thing is, uh, who was it? Was it Phil Spencer that came out uh, after the kind of fiasco of the Xbox X, X, Xbox One? Um, after that had all died down, he came out and said, we're never going to be not the strongest or cheapest option ever again. Uh, and and to me, to me, looking at it on paper, the Series X is a stronger machine. Um, but uh, Numbers-wise, yeah, absolutely. But I don't know if it necessarily needs to be. I think that's the thing. Why well, yeah. have a strong machine if you get no games? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, 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 your... Dana Carvey chap was uh, very quick to address having less teraflops because that seems to be what the the media are kind of focusing on is, is the GPU yeah. and, and you know 12 teraflops is equal to however many what four Xbox One X's and all that kind of stuff and the PlayStation One was was what was it 10.4 or something teraflops it was coming in at something uh, like that 10.3 three. but it was very quick to say that you you it's not necessarily about that. It's about the the speed and the frequency and all that as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. which I I agree with. Um, I I think you, you can get lost in these big numbers. Um, just thinking that the bigger the better, when it's not necessarily the case. So yeah, I mean, I think on paper, as you say, the Xbox Series X is the 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 stronger machine. Um, but it's yeah. I, I, again, as Gaddy said, that Sony kind of doing their thing again of just coming out front and going, nah, "This is what we're doing. We don't care, we don't really yeah. care what you're doing." Yeah. We're doing this. I, I think it, the the sort of bluster that uh, Xbox in the past have been very big on in the past, um, I, I think there's an element of that again because I think they had to come out swinging and out punching, but I, 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 I think Sony don't feel that frightened about it. I, I'm not sure. I think Sony still kind of feel that... The, and maybe there's still a, a, a tr- trump card or something that Sony are keeping on up their sleeve or whatever. I, I don't know because um, Sony didn't give us everything today um here's a question for you right it's well known that sony were waiting on xbox coming out with the stuff before they did mm-hmm. why do you think that is why do you think sony wanted xbox to go first i I've, not for a moment do i think it's that sony didn't think they were as good and they wanted to wait and find out how powerful it was no i'm just curious as to why they want to wait i think it's probably what Colm I'm going to say this a second ago. I think Xbox like to be like, we get this, 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 bazinga. Then Sony release a bit of information and they know what to keep in the back burner. To okay. Tantalize people as it goes on. Yeah. I think Sony are kind of standing in a strong position. They already have VR tech up and running. And I think, Colin, you said before uh, that old VR kits will work with PS5. Yeah, they and will, yeah. And stuff. So, like, even in that sense, they are. Gaming wise, tech wise, and that stronger ground footing than Xbox, in my you know, opinion. I also just don't think that Sony really are feeling under pressure. I think I think uh, Xbox were very much under. I think because Xbox One went so bad for Xbox, I kind of feel that Xbox almost wanted to kind of almost write off this console generation and get straight on to the next one. I think it was so the the this generation is so important for Xbox that they they've been champing at the bit to try and reveal this and I think Sony probably knew that and were a wee bit just sort of well we'll just let them, we, we'll just we'll just stick to our own times and how we want to do this and just let them do whatever they want you know, I, I, it reminds me of Alex uh, Alex Ferguson talking about the noisy neighbours um, about Man City, I, I think it's, I think Sony are, are quite happy to let, let Xbox uh, you know, go on and on about what have you and I think as Paul said, they, they addressed that really nicely with the fact that, well, you know, they don't don't get too tied down to the amount of teraflops or this or that because 
um, it's it, <laughs> it's that old joke about you know it's not the size of the boat it's the motion in the ocean you yeah. know, <laughs> I, I don't I don't think you necessarily need to um, get too tight and uh, yeah listen and I was just the same in the past that the, there's lots of fanboys who will be screaming about the numbers and if you if you want to do it that way then then fair dues but actually it's it, you know it's all very well having all that you know having all that ammunition as it were but if you can't get it loaded in time it's 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 fairly useless you know an interesting thing Dana Carvey was saying sorry Mark Cerny I shouldn't have called him Dana Carvey that's yeah, terrible yeah. Mark Cerny was saying um uh, he started. He used it very early on, and then he used it again a couple of times throughout the the address. Uh, it was about how things getting better, or you know, numbers getting bigger. Essentially, that doesn't justify a new generation. Um, it's all about innovation and changing things. And you know, with the the Xbox Series X, of course, it's got the the NMV, NVMe uh, SSD, which is going to cut the load times right down and all that everything else just seems like it's bigger and faster and things like that whereas your playstation 5 they very cleverly focused a lot on this 3d audio which is a new yeah. thing it's a new feature and it's going to evolve your your gaming and and giving it to everybody not just those that can afford your 7.1 sound 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 headsets yeah. and things like that. giving it to somebody who's going to be playing it on a wee crappy telly and still be able to have that sense that they can pinpoint sound around them um, it is giving you a new experience and another, another level of gaming uh, and I think that's what you're yeah. coming back to what Gary was saying about Sony coming out and doing stuff again um, is, is it's, good it, it's also the fact he, he was at pains to say that, that this will be as part of the unit it's not a peripheral that you're going to have to buy as yeah. an additional it's not it's coming with the machine it is the machine uh, and the machine so you don't even need necessarily a fancy telly that yeah, will do yeah. it mm-hmm it's your need... console that's going to do that it's going to be handling a lot of the it's doing the heavy lifting on that um, and it, I mean it's it's really amazing and it does sound like it's the key feature I don't I mean it'll be interesting to see whether what it, whether Xbox respond and, and they've got lots of 3D sound or whatever but this sounds like this is Sony's thing that could really set people beside and I know that for instance I do know that Paul is um, almost fetishistic about about yeah, his indeed, sound. yeah yeah so uh you know i think it could be a real feature and you know that way where you go to the the cinema and uh, every so often and you suddenly hear something like you just hear brilliant sound design or whatever or just amazing speakers and you're like wow yeah and the, the idea of having some something similar to that experience at your house or in your house for you know, yeah, the PS5, we still don't know about cost. It is still going to be expensive, but it's not going to be as expensive as having to fill your house with a hundred different speakers and the cost of a huge big subwoofer woofer and all that sort of stuff as well. So, yeah, I think it's really exciting and um, I cannot wait to hear more. Mm. Uh, hopefully a bit less of the numbers uh, so as my head doesn't hurt and a bit more <laughs> mm. sort of cool stuff. Yeah, I mean the the load times and everything. I mean, the, it's going to be it's going to be a very fine line between the Xbox and the PS4 for load times because that that's yeah. that's one of the big things in the new generation of the of these ultra fast SSDs. Um, but I I mean, just the, the sheer fact of uh, uh, it was nice of him to lay it out in a way that was very very clear that you know you 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 load a gigabyte a second or whatever it was, so you are waiting for you know. Um, 40 seconds for everything to load uh, whereas that just gets cut right down uh, and you know well, it backs it, up your, yeah. your Spider-Man demo that you had a few months away um, but yeah, yeah yeah, that's good and and actually he said that this will change the way that game developers can develop games they don't mm. have to put, put a big massive castle uh, they did a, a sort of demonstration you don't have to do a sort of big massive castle at the end of a big winding corridor or a huge set of stairs or an elevator just so they can load all the assets Um they they can just it can just load and actually the, the things can load as you as your character turns as your character yeah. moves and he and he essentially said that game developers won't be able, won't have to limit the speed that somebody runs at in the game or the speed that someone drives at the game so that it, it can only move as fast as the processor can 
they can actually increase that speed because it's going to be able to cope with loading things and, and it could be the fastest games running faster than than um, 30 or 60 frames a second. These games could be running even faster. 120 frames per second is what they're going for. I mean, astonishing. And uh, think of how smooth that's going to be. That's too far, man. Six is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I do hope that we find out more soon. Anybody else get anything to say on that? Nah. No, I, nah. I just... I, it'll be interesting to see how all the coronavirus stuff goes. I, I'll be amazed if these consoles do launch at Christmas now. I think the the impact on the world is is so huge that I'll be amazed if these if these consoles, I, both of them, are out by Christmas time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, I, you know, you live in hope. Um, we shall wait and see we shall wait and see so yes so what, what's your thoughts on the Playstation and Xbox Series X do let us know get in touch and here's how you can do it we'd love to hear from you find us on Facebook as The Nearly Men Twitter and Instagram where we are at Nearly Men or email info at the com. alright ho then uh, who wants to hear some cosy scrums oh do I yeah you oh, do yeah. cosy scrums well here's one for you I've only got one for you um, I, I did hear about this for the, the hockey but I, I picked out this story because it was quite good as well. Um, because all the, the virus stuff and all that, um, all the sporting events are getting cancelled around the world. Everyone's getting yeah. shut down. Uh, but apparently, uh, Real Betis and Seville, two players from the, the real teams, went on to FIFA and played it online. And 60,000 people watched them on Twitch. <laughs> wow. So they, actually, they played the game when they would have played the real game. Um, <laughs> it was Real Betis striker, or here we go, Borja Iglesias played against Sevilla's left-back Sergio Reguillon. Not oh, bad. That was not bad. Uh, I, so so they, they, they basically played for their own team and, as I say, 60,000 people watched them, which I think is great fun. The hockey players and all that were doing it as well, I think. Um, oh, okay. th- they might have done it like a kind of pro clubs way where everybody's playing as himself uh, well, yeah. I, was, I was trying to find it and I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> see it anywhere but I thought that was a great idea um, but uh, in the game of Real Betis versus Seville, Real Betis won 6-5 with uh, Iglesias I, scoring the winning goal I believe oh, himself. <laughs> well uh, I know I, I, in Scotland uh, Tony Watt, the Motherwell striker um, he organised a similar thing and was doing a stream he's a, he's a big Twitch streamer and was uh, was streaming a similar pro clubs thing, Brilliant. and uh, and him and Declan Gallagher, uh, I think David Turnbull, uh, Simon Murray, and Harry uh, is it Harry Cochran from Hearts. They were all involved, and I think the plan was that there was one one player and one fan uh, oh, that right, were all right. playing. But I did see. I think I saw Simon Murray complaining about the fan that he was playing with was absolute rubbish. <laughs> uh, subsequently, Declan Gallagher, the Motherwell and Scotland defender, has um, is now at, on Twitter demanding that they play Call of Duty because I don't think he did very well in FIFA. And I saw that Declan Gallagher had bought his own PlayStation camera today and is going to be streaming. And I think they're streaming again tonight. Um, unfortunately. Uh, Paul and myself were streaming last night so I wasn't watching and yeah the last thing that we want is more competition on Twitch. <laughs> ah, especially people with more followers than us. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah good on the good on the Motherwell players and the other players for uh, for doing that and of course for the Real Betis and Seville. I mean there's going to be more and more of this. Uh, I ended up watching some of Chris Martin from Coldplay. I don't even like Coldplay. Oh dear. I was watching some of him <laughs> playing in his house. Um, just people trying to, to pass the time. Stealing our views. Indeed. <laughs> It'd be famous if it weren't for them. <laughs> famous, I you. Okay, so that was just your wee nice and tidy cosy crumb. Cosy crumbs. Freebies, freebies. Uh, let's have a look. So, Games of Gold, uh, there's not much different here from last episode. For the month of March, you're getting Batman The Enemy Within, the graphic adventure for Xbox One. Oh, from the 16th of March to the 31st of March, it's Sonic Generations, the platform game on Xbox One from the Xbox 360. And the 16th of March to the 15th of April, you're getting Shantae, Half Genie Hero, platform Xbox One. Next month, you get the other half. <laughs> PlayStation Plus for March you're getting Shadow of the Colossus Action Adventure and Sonic Forces the platform for PS4 my wife had a wee go of Sonic Forces oh, so good you enjoying it yeah 
Yeah, I was like, I'll try this. Two hours later, I was still trying it. Oh, there you go, there you go. Uh, also, um, oh the gosh, when's this? Oh, it's not this weekend, it's next, isn't it? Next weekend. 27th of March from 4pm to midnight on the 29th, so I think that's like the, the is that Friday to Sunday? Is that how that works? That's Friday to Sunday. Uh, Predator Hunting Grounds Trial, the asymmetrical multiplayer on PS4. I am well up for this, I'm trying this all weekend. I can't wait. Yeah, I originally was going to be unavailable, I think I will be available. I'll <gasps> certainly be in lockdown, so I will be playing. Oh my! Maybe Coincidentally, you Gary I will be. Did, did yep. you see that Army has apparently done his vo- uh, lent his voice to a Predator game, and uh, all all he said was he'd been uh, rewatching Predator because he had done a, a voice. He'd been doing voice work for um, for a Predator game. Oh. So everyone's assuming that it's this because surely there's not a second Predator game coming out. Oh my um, gosh, oh. that's exciting. So that, that could uh, be cool. This is Whiskey and Lulu. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you see that video, Chops? Of oh, him, yeah. yeah. They, oh, yeah. With donkeys. donkeys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody That's tweeted, uh, I, I would pay good money to see a kids' programme with Arnie, Whiskey and Lulu. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> Story time with Arnie. <laughs> I just love the fact that it, it, was, it wasn't discussing it, it was telling us what to do. This is it now, you know, stay indoors. <laughs> Have we lost Colin? No, I'm here, I'm oh, still here. Why are you not laughing at me, Colin? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, see me. <laughs> Righty ho, so that's your freebies. Let's move on to the games we have been playing. Um I'm gonna go first because uh the lovely folks over at Sony gave us dreams a while back, uh, and I've still been tipping mm. in. You still on, on the dreams wagon? Yeah, I tried dipping in out when and tried lots of random things but uh, have you got anything lately so i don't have anything yeah, of this course. Week. well that's what do you know I, i've got a couple for this week um, which is good uh now i can't read them because uh, <laughs> <I'm, laughs> well, well, when we started recording this it was perfectly light and now it's dark and i'm now sitting <laughs> in a dark room uh oh here we go right so first dream of the week for me was player piano player by Ooh. enigma underscore zero one two three and basically, this is essentially like a rock band game. So it's like a, ry- a rhythm oh. game. Uh, you're in like an old westy saloon and you're playing the piano. You play the piano player. Uh, it's like a rock band game uh, on the lines. You know, it's a rhythm game. So you press circle, mm-hmm. down, mm-hmm. all that kind of jazz. Uh, but if you get it wrong, we targets start to appear behind you. <laughs> Oh and, and you've got to kind of dodge them while still playing. And if you manage to get it back, oh. the targets disappear. But if they don't, they start to shoot. Ah, you have to ah. dodge. That's quite that's good. Like my kind of Red Dead. It's just really simple. It just times you how long you can do. So I think I, I ended up oh, doing something cool. like seven minutes was my best. But um, that was good fun. Just again, really, really simple, uh, but good fun. Another one uh, which you might have already seen, Gary. I think it was um, one of the. Oh, I'm just trying to see if I can see it. Uh, no, it was like one of the dreams of the week or something. I think at some point, mm-hmm. but it was called Kubrick. Kubrick by. The underscore Burgervin. Uh, that's T H E underscore B U R G E R V A N. This was really good. Um, really? Uh, this is a proper good game. It's really I think it's I quite short. It and was like, yeah. So basically, you're, it's, it's, gosh, how to describe it? It's like a platformer. Uh, mm-hmm. And you can get dropped on a cube and you can move left or, you know, you move your guy left or right. Da, 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 uh, yeah. But to work out the puzzle, you, you can rotate the cube. That um, you're on, so you can spin it round, and you can also rotate it, uh, and and that'll make you like go, essentially walk on the ceiling and different things like that. So you avoid okay. like fire and things like that. Yeah. But it's, I think it's only like six cubes you do. Uh, mm-hmm. But I only got to the second one and playing it, uh, and that was a good fifteen twenty minutes. Oh, nice. Um, but Kubrick, yeah, do do check it out because it's really mm-hmm. well done. It's really cleverly done. One of these really simple kind of. Addictive wee games, yeah. Uh, Kubrick by the underscore Bergervin, and that's that's a good couple of dreams for for this week. Uh, cool. uh, you fall in though. I mean, obviously oh, yeah. you 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 go in, you say I'll look for ten minutes, and then you're gone away. 
Four hours, hours later. later. I know, I know. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, what else have I been playing? I have been playing Gang Beasts. I downloaded Gang Beasts. I couldn't oh. not do it. I'd, I've been waiting for it to go on sale, and it went on sale. And I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to pick it up just for a bit of fun. Even if it gives us one night of fun, then that, that's it's great. It's so good. Um, it's my so wife's good. really enjoying it as well. So it's it's <laughs> so silly. Just all oh, the memories. I, I put up the, the video of us from the, <laughs> the, the stream, the 24 hour stream. Oh my gosh, so much laughter. I was sore after playing that. It was <laughs> so funny. Gang Beasts. Uh, uh, who is it again? It's uh, oh, Devolver Digital, is it? Uh, uh, yes, yes, I'm sure it is. Very good, very good game. Uh, what okay. else? Half-Life. I uh, did a wee quick stream of Half-Life. The, the OG Half-Life, as the kids call it. Yeah. Uh, on the PC, thanks to my brother, I was able to share it through his Steam library uh, and stream that. And only oh, I've only played about two hours into it or something like that. But it's it's I have no memory of playing it. I definitely did play it when it was um, when it was first out. Uh, what would that be? Ninety three, ninety four. Gosh, oh gosh, that's too too far away. <laughs> uh, but it still holds up really well. It's still really fun. It, it's it's funny because it's it feels better than. Like Doom or Jedi Knight and all that, it just feels a wee bit more narrative. Well, of course, it's, it was it was the kind of big one that made it narrative, but uh, really. Oh, since it came out in 1998. 1998? I, I knew it wasn't earlier. Doom came out in 1993. Right, that makes me feel better. That makes me feel better. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, but yeah, good fun. Really good fun. Um, and I'll hopefully stream more of that. Possibly, yeah. possibly on Friday, stream more. Fun. And probably maybe to segue into uh, Mr. Little as well, we have been playing Warzone. Indeed. Call of Duty Warzone. Get yourself in the game, soldier. Get <laughs> in the game. <laughs> Practice is over. Let's go for the real thing. I just love the fact as well, like, every time you do something, it's like, da 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 It's like, <laughs> it's mad, like, sort of like new metal, but I like, it's, it's like absolutely like, brutastic. Like when the ring closes in and it goes dip, 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 sneakily trying to snipe at somebody and like just as you like take the safety off you're going dip, 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 <laughs> um, yeah, so Call, Call of Duty Warzone, if you don't know uh, and you've been living under a rock, is the free to play battle royale mode of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019. Uh, yeah. It was released this week, was it? Was it just this week? Uh, yeah, just this week, yeah. Uh, um, and uh, me and you were streaming it last night. We did we quite were. well at one point. I mean, we, we were. Did, uh, we, we, we were kind of hiding on a roof, <laughs> sniping, well, we didn't uh, even snipe anybody really. But we got just hiding on a roof for ages. We got a couple of kills, and we got out of the gulag. We did. We both managed to get out of the gulag. There's um, a great, times. great mechanic where you know your average battle royale Gary. <laughs> can I speak now? The average ba- battle royale Gary is, uh, you know, you die, game over, you need to start again. Yeah. So in, in Warzone, when you die, you get taken to the gulag, the prison. Oh, cool. And you essentially get another chance. So it puts you in the gulag, and then it faces you off in a one v one scenario, and we tiny map. Uh, and if you kill the guy, you get back out again. Oh, that uh, sounds and horrible. Back, and, oh, I throw up. Back it and back into the game. Back what, what, into the game. You so you get know. a second life, really. I can already uh, hear my heart beating at the thought. There's it's all, great. It's there's really also cool. your, your team can also buy you back in as well. Even if you fail the gulag, they can still buy you back in. <laughs> That's quite nice. Um, so it, it is good, and uh, if you're really good at it, you'll you, you'll last long. But um, <laughs> needless to say, the Neely men weren't lasting that long. Yeah. I can't wait. I'm going to play more of it. I thought it was that. Oh, have you gone? Hello. I'm still here. You're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just got out there. You just said uh, you you love it. You're you're going to play more of it. Yeah, definitely going to play more of it. Nice one. Uh, it's, it's so much fun. I've I've played a wee game on PC as well, uh, and it's, it's it's nice playing with the mouse again. Oh, do you know even playing Half Life? Uh, it, it took me back to my my teenage years. Uh, it was nice playing the mouse for Warzone. Haven't played haven't played it on both. It's, mm-hmm. it's interesting and. I mean, people always say that these PC players have got the advantage, and my God, do they? It's so, it's so much mm. pinpoint accuracy with the mouse than it is with the controller. I should say yeah, as well um, that myself and my brother 
brother bear peter riley friend of the podcast played a game playstation to xbox as well and it was absolutely yeah. seamless it was oh, yeah. it was brilliant it was really good and the moment you connect in your party chat's there and it's it's instantaneous there's no lag at all or anything like that it's, it's, you wouldn't know you're and playing on a different platform is that still using uh, the the in-game chat? Yeah, in-game chat. Yeah. So basically, oh, if you cool. you and I were in a party and we invited Pete, he would just join our voice chat. Oh, that's it's, fantastic! It's really it's really seamless. I've not done it PC to anything yet, but I've I've seen that work before. If you know what I mean, I've never seen Xbox and PlayStation talk to each other, so it was nice to do that. Good, excellent. What did you make uh, of Warzone? I know, I, you, know you enjoyed I, it, but tell us tell us the details. I just don't. <laughs> I just thought it was great. Um, a battle royale game in first person suits me an awful lot better than the, the sort of third person Fortnite stuff. I think it looks excellent. Um, yeah, yeah, it does, doesn't the, it? The map is huge. There's so much to do. The guns are great. Um, the sort of uh, kind of perks and things like that, the the um, kill streak rewards and things like that are really interesting. So it feels like Call of Duty, but at the same time, it was different. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was absolutely magic. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, on that, I've been uh, actually doing quite a lot of streaming. Uh, obviously, myself and Paul are self-employed. Uh, with the whole uncertainty that's happened, we've had lots of work cancelled. Yep. Uh, I've been feeling rather helpless about the house, so I decided to do some streaming. Um, you know, in the hope that if people were self-isolating or or uh, at home social distancing and were sitting bored looking for something to do, they could come. Uh, watch watch some some uh, streams and, and chat away and um, it's been good it's been fun I've been playing some Doom 2 I was streaming some uh, Medieval today uh, what else did I play I played something else earlier on yesterday um, what, what, oh, what, what, Warzone yeah. yeah and uh, I'm going to do more of that I'm going to ideally be streaming twice a day uh, oh my uh, just to, to, to try and give folk a chance I think uh, to, to, to give them something if, if they're interested i'll be playing a variety of games so by all means if there's something you want to see me play uh, get in touch and give me a shout um and you can have a look and obviously i think that uh, us as a collective as well we'll try and uh, put our um uh, streaming up a bit and and see just so we can give folks some more content to, to actually um to watch because this is going to be a, a tough period we don't know how long we're going to be stuck in the house for and uh, you know there's only so many episodes of such and such you can watch you know you're, you're looking <laughs> for other things and the good thing with streaming is you can actually chat to people you can ask questions you can answer you can give suggestions and it, it, it's just a bit more of a, a community feel so um so yeah let us know what you'd like to see us play are we double this a call love it indeed <laughs> <laughs> mr hog have you have you managed to play any games in, I have your... actually. Um, so in the the build up to the, the end of the month, the next month where I have like four games coming out that I'm dying to play, I was getting restless with games I have. So I tried to revisit games I've not finished. Uh, uh. But then the PlayStation Store had to sale, so I bought new games. Um, so very quickly, <laughs> I'll run through. I downloaded Bloodstained. If you, as I said last time, um, I've got more into that. The Castlevania kind of clone. Um, it's really good fun. It's really excellent. There's like three different endings as well. So it keeps you guessing. Really good exploration. So if you're a fan of the Castlevania games, definitely look up Bloodstained. I revisited We Happy Few, the kind of 1960s um, first-person game where you pop happy pills oh, to yeah, a yeah. situation, but you're trying to break the system. It is the longest game known to man. <laughs> like, it's even longer than Days Gone. Oh I just my. Want to stop. Like, and in this game, you play three different characters. I'm only in the second character, and I've got about a fortnight's worth of gameplay. And I'm just like, just let me finish. But the story's good, so I'm going to finish it eventually. <laughs> um, I downloaded Wolfenstein 2. Oh. That feels weird. That's, There's that's... no weight to the character. He's dead floaty. That's um, a Colin Little department, that. It, but, uh, it, but it makes me feel sick. I yeah, him. I remember you saying that. And I get why, maybe because he's, he's no weight to him. There's no... Now, we kind of get the footsteps normally. This guy glides like he's in soap. Um, it doesn't let you turn the head bob off either. It's very odd. Um, I'll, I'll go back to that because I downloaded the, 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 the new Young Blood as well because I was like, everything's in sale. Woo! Um, <laughs> so I need to finish that. I did get Terminator Resistance because that was super cheap. Oh, very good. Oh, it's a very good Terminator game. Uh, Does it have six... whiskey and Lulu? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's banned it sadly. Um, but 
it's been good. I, I, I'm near the end of that. That's been fun. And I said I've been playing some Sonic Forces as well, which is so much fun. It's a good mix of classic Sonic, some retro, uh, some modern Sonic, and you get to design your own furry, I guess. What, what um, furry did he, you go? I went for a purple wolf. Oh. And he wears a pure combat suit and stuff. He's really cool. And, um, but, uh... And the story's really interesting, uh, and there's lots of old characters coming back in it, and old bad guys and stuff, so it's a pure memory drive for people who've been Sonic players for years, and it's really fresh and easy to play for new, new players as well. Um, so for a free game, it is pretty rotten. And I did another run of Resident Evil 2. <laughs> of course <Yeah>. you did. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I was bored, and I was like, well, I'll do it. I'll play Resident Evil 2 again. Are you excited for Resident Evil 3 coming Can't there? Can't wait. The demo drops tomorrow and I am not playing it. Drops tomorrow? Well, yes. t- today when people listen to this. Oh, Yeah, <gasps> so it's out. If you want a wee flavour flavor of it and see what's going on. I've heard it's really good. I've heard flavor, the flavor. is terrifying. Flavour, flavour, yeah. It's just in that, in that mood. <laughs> um, and, but I'm holding off. I don't want to spoil anything for me because it's a, a chunk of the game. I don't want to get to the bit of the game going, oh, I've been here. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I'm just gonna. And I'm right thinking uh, next weekend there's a resistance beta. Yeah, Is that right? yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, need to go on so that I'm as well. I'm getting in that, so that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, I think it's an open beta, if memory serves. Ooh. I think it's That's be. good because so. last time it was just Resident Evil Ambassadors, and I missed out because oh. I couldn't remember my ambassador code. <laughs> damn it, damn you. <laughs> very good, very good, guys, very good. Uh, please do get in touch, let us know what you've been playing. We love to hear what you've been playing. Here's how you can do it. We'd love to hear from you. Find us on Facebook as The Nearly Men, Twitter and Instagram, where we are at Nearly Men, or email info at thenearlymen.com. Yes, so please do get in touch. These people have, so you, there's no excuse for it. Uh, please do drop us a line. Jamie Simpson has been in touch uh, asking what he's been playing. He says the self-isolation no, game. No, no. He says, my yeah. son had the temperature, so that's the whole family isolating for two weeks. That's oh. bad news, that. Sad to hear that, Jamie. Imagine to get a bit of switch in here and there, but at the moment, games aren't his main concern. Stay healthy, guys, and look forward to the episode. Thank stay you, Jamie. Safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay healthy, Jamie. Um, <laughs> you're, you're having a stroke over there. I just, I just had a bit of a breathing problem there. But do, do we need to phone 111 or anything like that? No, I think we're okay. <laughs> Good game. Uh, yeah, seriously, uh, I hope everyone's doing okay and you survive getting through that two weeks. That will be pretty tough, but I yeah. hope you are all doing okay and looking after each other yeah yeah Richard Gray's been in touch as well uh, talking about the PlayStation 5 he says I'll expect I'll keep my PS4 for another three years and buy up all those cheap games I didn't have the money to play when they came out <laughs> hear that hear that Hintable plan uh, Jamesy42 on Twitter says he went back to his library and played Titanfall 2 and NBA 19 anybody played Titanfall 2? Uh, yeah, it's no. good but no. yeah, I've heard it's very good uh, he said he had a wee go in Warzone on Call of Duty. He liked Plunder. Keep it clean. <laughs> Keep it clean. <laughs> <laughs> Outrageous. Uh, yeah, Plunder is good. We've not, have you played Plunder yet, Colin? No, not yet. Uh, it's, it's good. It's a bit more of a kind of team deathmatch thing, but you have to get rid of money. So you, you, mm. col- you collect money and then you have to get air, uh, helicopters to come and take it away. Uh, you essentially go to give it to the helicopters and people are just sitting waiting to shoot you that's hellish saving the game <laughs> uh, he says PS5 news hopefully he says not a delay due to, to the crazy times we're having but I think that might happen uh, I think yeah. it's maybe inevitable uh, I'm yeah. still holding out for this year though I think it might just be later than we think yeah. who knows Jason Park says the PS5 will release later this year and most people will buy it but keep playing the PS4 library on it since that which we dare not speak of will delay a lot of games and game development cycles but yeah I mean Voldemort v- very, po- very possibly Voldemort will stop game development I thought uh, I saw about calling that was nude fan art <laughs> Let's, let's let's not make that a thing. No, that's that. that's got to be a thing, dude. It's drop a drop thing. us a line. I've capitalized yeah. it. I'm going to make a special page in the website. <laughs> Thenearlyman.com <laughs> slash nudies. N- <laughs> NSFW. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I don't know. Uh, Project Red, CG Project Red have already came out and said that Cyberpunk won't be delayed because of this. Uh, Square have said Twelve Five Six Seven won't either, but it might be they they are not expecting delays but it might be on the other end of delays yeah so who knows who knows yeah. uh, we've just got to take it a day at a time haven't we 
Yeah. Jason goes yeah. on to say, but hey, we have Animal Crossing on Switch on Friday, Persona 5, The Royal next week, and then Resi- Resident Evil 3 and Final Fantasy 7 Remake all coming out by April 10th. He's left off Doom Eternal. Colin. I know. Those are the four games that I mentioned earlier. <laughs> oh my word. He says it's self isolation made easier. I can hear <laughs> that. I can hear that. Thanks for getting in touch, guys. We appreciate it. Um, we love hearing what you're playing. Um, and obviously, Colin will be around at your house, Jason, with Doom Eternal to give you a lesson. No, indeed. Renew and releases. Exchange for new. Yes. No, no, no. <laughs> new releases. There's hundreds of new releases coming out. Let me fly through them. Uh, 17th of March, you're getting Green on Orcs Life on Android and PC. Overpass on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Pillars of Dust on PC. World Above Cloud Harbor on iOS and Android. 19th of March, you're getting Escaped f- Escape First on the Oculus Rift and Vive. Legend of Keepers on the PC. Silent World on Nintendo Switch and PC. The Pale City on PC. 20th of March is a big day. It's a big, big day, whether you're a, a Nintendo fan or a shooting fan. You're getting Animal Crossing <laughs> New Horizons on Switch. And Ooh. also Doom Eternal, PS4, Xbox Ooh, One, Nintendo yeah. Switch. Switch and PC. You're also getting La Mulana 1 and 2 for PS4, Xbox One and Switch. Out of the Park Baseball 21 on PC. Pooplers on Switch. Super (laughs) super epic (laughs) PS4 and Nintendo Switch. 24th of March, Element Space PS4 and Xbox One. Freedom Finger on PS4, Xbox One. Odalus The Dark Call PS4. Onikin The Unstoppable Edition PS4. And Paper Beast on PS4. Is that also on PSVR as well? I think it might be. I don't know. That's by the guy. That guy. Can't remember his name. <laughs> yeah, that his, guy. His name escaped me and, and what he did before has escaped me. Is You're it, good com- at that. Command and Conquer? Do, do Command and Conquer? I can't remember. Anyway. Uh, no, it wasn't. I'm talking rubbish. 26th of March, you're getting Arafel on PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, iOS and Android. Down the Rabbit Hole on Oculus and Vive. Out of Gas on PC. <laughs> the Last Oasis on PC. And the 27th of March, you're getting Biped on PC. Children of Zordarks on the Xbox One and Switch. Lost Worlds Beyond the Page, PS4, Xbox One, Switch and PC. One Piece Pirate Warriors 4 on PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch and PC. 29th of March, Operencia, The Stolen (laughs) Sun, (laughs) PS4, Nintendo Switch. Ty, The Tasmanian Tiger on Switch. 31st of March, Bubble Bubble 4, Friends, The Switch. Chapeau, Nintendo Switch and PC. Creature in the Well, PS4, Little Jew, or Ittle Jew, Nintendo Switch. Persona 5 Royal on PS4. (laughs) 1st of April, Stimuli on PC. 2nd of April, Masm, Jekyll and Hyde, Nintendo Switch and PC. (laughs) And 3rd of April, Elios Tournament on Switch and PC. Hyper Parasite, PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch and PC. And some independent little game called (laughs) Resident Evil 3 Nemesis on PS4 and Xbox One. No PC release? Did not do Resident Evil on PC? No, it's coming on PC as well. Ah. Well, there you go. That uh, that was essentially the gaming edition of listening to Paolo do the shipping forecast. That's wonderful. <laughs> People will be sleeping now. <laughs> At one with themselves. Well, gentlemen, that's that has been a big day for us, and and we are uh, hotter off the press with PS Five news uh, for the first <laughs> yeah. time in our lives. Uh, yeah, uh, people. Get the news. People will wake up tomorrow and actually get information from us. <laughs> well, well if, it was only if I was able to articulate it properly. <laughs> it's indeed wonderful. It's been an absolute pleasure being with you, gentlemen. Uh, it's been a pleasure. We've been speaking about PS5, Xbox One X, we're talking about Dreams, Call of Duty Warzone. Please do get in touch with what you've been playing, uh, what you think of the PS5 news, Xbox Series X news. Uh, Do let us know. It's been an absolute pleasure. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, But in the meantime, thank you. It's goodbye from Colin Little. Goodbye. Stay safe, everyone. It's goodbye from Gary Hogg. Wipe down your control pads. Bye. That's goodbye from me. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye.